Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather here on the Sunday morning, Lord, we know that you are here with us, but help us to feel your presence in this place. Lord, as um, we come this morning and lots to do on our to-do list, Lord, help us to settle in to hear your word spoken anew, that we might be filled up so that we can be sent out. We ask this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. So today, um, this week, we are in the whole book of 2 Corinthians, and if any of you dove in and read um, the reading of 2 Corinthians, if you were like me the first time that I read the whole book through, I was like, what? What in the world? So I did some digging in, and I did a bunch of um, research and um, figuring out what in the world is Paul saying in the second book of Corinthians. And so I was trying to talk it through, my poor husband, so I said, okay, sit down for a second, I need to talk this through. And I was telling him all about it, and I was trying to put a good spin on it and make it fun and fun to learn about, and about three minutes in, I saw his eyes glaze over, and he was trying really hard to pretend like he was, you know, in it. And I said, not working, is it? And he goes, "Uh uh-uh. And, um... So I said, shoot, I'm going to have to find some way to tell them about the second book of, of Corinthians, the second letter. And he goes, well, what I kind of hear you saying that um, second Corinthians is a lot like National Lampoon's Christmas vacation. <laughs> and I was like, huh, did we watch too much on Thanksgiving, right? And we started talking about it, and I was like, yeah, it is like Chevy Chase's Christmas vacation. And so you're asking yourself, what in the world, Pastor Sarah? So I will get there. Give me two seconds. You need a little bit of background. So Paul writes these two books. Um, He goes to Corinth. He tells them about Jesus, what has happened. He gets the church started. He goes on to different places. The first letter of Corinthians he writes, and we're thinking that probably there are some letters in between the first letter until we get to the second letter. We're thinking that maybe the second letter of Corinthians isn't one big letter, but maybe it's three different letters, and that's what makes it kind of confusing. And at the beginning of 2 Corinthians, um, it says that Paul was going to go and be with them again, but he realizes that maybe it isn't a good place to go. There's tension between Paul and the Corinthians. And what Paul talks about, in short, is that the Corinthians, there's these people that have come in, and they, Paul calls them the super apostles. And I can't help but think about them as like super capes and like big muscly people, and Paul being kind of scrawny, you know, and not very like appealing. And so these uh, super apostles come in, and they are telling the people of Corinth that what Paul told them was not quite exactly right, that there's this more like... Um, this better way of the gospel. There's this more appealing way that what they know isn't quite, Paul's kind of, you know, he's homeless, he doesn't have, um, he doesn't stay in one place, he doesn't have any wealth, and these people, they come in and they have wealth and they have wisdom, and what the world sees as success is what these super apostles have. And if you watch Chevy Chase Christmas Vacation, I'm sorry if you haven't seen it yet, you need to go home and do that. Um, But if you have not seen it yet, Chevy Chase, remember at the beginning, he really wants everything to be perfect. He wants the perfect Christmas time. And he he knows that he's going to get this bonus, right, this money in the bank, and he's already dreaming about what that could look like, and he wants what? A pool in the backyard, right? Right? And so the first thing that they do in the movie is he tells, he hauls the, everybody in the car and he takes them out and they're looking for the perfect Christmas tree that's way larger than their house. And it turns out really crazy. And then we go through the family stuff and then they're at Thanksgiving and they have the, or at Christmas, they're at, with the turkey, right? And the turkey looks great on the outside, but as soon as they go to cut into it, what happens? It caves in. He's searching and wants the perfect thing, whatever society tells us is the perfect thing. And he'll go to anything, even kidnapping his boss, right, to make it happen. And at the end, he learns that what is it about? None of that. 
And in 2 Corinthians, these super apostles come and sell these Corinthians lies. They tell them that glory is in power and might and good things and what the world can give you and that believing in Jesus Christ is about having more and looking good and everything being great. And Paul in chapter 5 says it is about none of that. See, the good news that 2 Corinthians brings is that the power is in our weakness. That Christ didn't come to to show us all this grandiose, but Christ comes as a baby in the manger. Christ comes and dies on the cross and rises again so that we might have life. That Christ reconciles us to him not through greatness, but through humbling himself. Paul reminds them that it's in the way that Paul acts and the way that Paul is and the very being of the way that he lives out the gospel that we are called to live out the gospel. Not in greatness, but in humbling ourselves. You see, in Chevy Chase's Christmas vacation, right, he tries and he strives for all the things, and I think this time of the year we do the same thing. We have to have the best presents, the best lights, it has to look good. I don't know about you, but I don't even like to check my email right now because it's full of what? Ads about all the deals I can get that really aren't deals, right? And I'm tired of swiping all of the things out of there. Everything tells us that to have the best and to be the best is to have more. To be more. To have the better job. To get more. To feel like we have done something for ourselves. And that's what these apostles were facing. And Paul reminds them that our true worth and our true self is in the gospel. In the one that is Jesus Christ. So I want you, since we didn't have a children's sermon, so you got to hold up your hands, okay? So this is us. This is our sinful self. This is where we mess up. This is the places where we want more and we're always looking for more and the places of sin and weakness and death that is in us. And what happens on the cross is we go where Jesus goes. So do this. And Jesus takes our place. And in front of God, we look like Jesus. What does it mean to look like Jesus? Blameless. Sinless. And God, and Jesus takes on all of our sin and all of our pain, and that is who takes for us and the reconciliation that happens on the cross. Okay, I'll let you put your hands down now. Maybe. No, I'm just kidding. It's radical. What Paul was saying to them, that in the very weakness, at the end of the 2 Corinthians in chapters 12 through, um, 11, 10 through 12, Paul says to them, I could boast about all the things that make me worthy. I could tell you about me hanging out with Jesus. I could tell you um, that I have been um, hurt and that I have taken one for the team, for the gospel. I could tell you of all the credentials that make me worthy of you listening to me. But he says, I boast in my weakness because it's in my weakness that God is glorified. You see, that's good news because on this Christmas time, when we try to make it about the things that we can do or the things that we can create or the places that we can make grand or the ways that we can be enough, God says you are already enough. You are already enough through and in who Jesus Christ is, and because what Christ has done for us, we are enough. That Christ dying on the cross and rising again and taking on our sins and reconciling us to him, we are enough. And that it's in the very places where we mess up and our weakness and the places that we cannot do it ourselves, that God is glorified 
because it's in those places that we understand our true need for a savior. The one who enters in just like a baby in the manger humbles himself and reminds us of the true reason and meaning and that we are God's now and forever. Not in the stuff, not in the places that we can create ourselves, but in who God is. And it's in and through that that we can go and we can do. And it's in and through that that God is glorified. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that in you we are enough. We give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, that it's not in our greatness and not in about having all of the things and it's not in about the ways that we can create and make everything wonderful, but it's in your son, Jesus Christ, that, we are, that you are glorified and that we are strong. Lord, we just ask that um, during this Advent season that we would remember to turn to you, that we would remember that we are enough because of you, and that we would lean into those promises and that we would live them out in our everyday places and spaces. We ask this and everything else in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen.